Rise of Man for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. With me, I'm delighted to have with me leading trainer in the boxing industry, Mr. Adam Booth. Adam, why are you recording me? Just want me to be in your gallery. You did it? Is it going to go anywhere? Okay, no worries. Send me a WhatsApp of it. <laughs> How are you doing? Good, thank you. He's got the Cougar microphone thing where he kind of, he half asks a question and just wafts it and, you, you, and then you start to answer and he brings it back and then you go, that's what's going on. <laughs> um, before I talk about anything related to boxing, um, firstly I always ask everybody, the last 12 months have been difficult for everybody with the pandemic, how's life been for yourself um, and the last 12 months? I've got food in my belly and a roof over my head so can't complain. And got health. Health, happiness and security. Good, good to hear. Adam, uh, it's Saturday night, we're a few hours away from the show tonight, Akoli Glowacki. Um, on the card is your fighter, uh, Ellie Scottney. Um, she made a debut a couple of months ago, I believe it was in Peterborough, on the Ritz and Vasquez card against Beck Connolly. And obviously Beck's been around, been in with Terry Harvard, Rachel Ball, etc. How did you assess her debut performance? It was good. It was kind of what we expected because we know how good she is and how good she can potentially be. I know that Beck's strong, tough and will always be there, but Ellie just showed that she is of a certain grade and that's what we're working on. Do you go back the next day and, or when she comes back in the gym and then go through the fight again and analyse the fight and what went wrong, went wrong, what went right, what we need to focus on? Not that one, not that one because there wasn't too much to take from it in terms of uh, changing other than it's just part of her progression and, we, and what we're working on in the gym shows out what we need to work on in the gym shows out so it's just part of the process she's fighting Maylies Gangloff I believe what do we know about Maylies she has uh, a lot of um, amateur bouts she's strong and she comes to fight and she comes to throw her hands which is good because that's what Ellie needs she needs someone that's coming to look to try and do something and that gives her an opportunity to find what she wants to do it's, it's an ideal fight for her second fight. How do you... Uh, we live in a society in a time now where before fighters had the opportunity to t have 10, 15, 16, 17 kind of learning fights and slowly, slowly stepping up. Now we're seeing fighters jumping in world title fights after 11 fights, 12 fights. We saw yesterday Lee McGregor win the European title after just 10 fights. So what's your perception of it? Is it take your time learn your craft before you start dipping in into the, the big people, the big fights? Well, it's, it's, it's different now. It's a different business. There are, there are more opportunities. But also, because we're now in this weird time where we don't know whether we're going to be allowed to work or not allowed to work, you know, you've you got to think about not the fighters that you see on TV, but the fighters that have to work to earn a living as well as box. They can't afford to train not to have a fight. Uh, Jermaine Brown, for example, trained hard for a fight that was due to happen last night with the MTK show. And his opponent pulled out the week of the fight with a bad knee. Now, he did 10 weeks of training, sacrificed, didn't work, so he sacrificed his income, paid his petrol money to get up there with Adam Martin and Mickey Guilfoyle, and they walk away about a penny. And there are a lot of fighters now that have had to down tools because there's just not enough fights going on where they can earn a living from it. So... The, the pond is a lot smaller now for opponents as well. On top of that, you've got the added problem of international travel. The other added problem is that everyone's got to be COVID tested every five breaths. And so the chance of a PCR test picking up something is increased. So fighters are losing opportunities because of COVID as well. So, you know, to say, well, I'd like to have five fights at this level and another five fights at that level, you can't have that, son. It's just, that's just not happening anymore. You've got to take your opportunities when they come along. The, the fighters and the, the matron fighters, who are the main fighters, should be grateful because they're getting golden opportunities. But underneath the surface, there's a lot of fighters who are deserving of chance that just aren't getting it at the moment. And, and that's, a, that's a real shame. And I hope that changes sooner rather than later. So do you have like a career, a path or a plan next 18 months or 24 months? Or is it just literally fight by fight? Well, for now, it's like, let's get the fight tonight. After the fight tonight, we'll worry about it then. But I don't like talking about fights until 
until the one that you've got in front of you is done. But uh, Eddie's good enough to be tested and fast-tracked. But tonight's a good step for him. Mick Conlin, um, I've heard rumours he might be out sometime in May, not an official date yet, but how's he looking in, in, in the gym and can you confirm if he's going to be out in early May? I can't confirm anything other than we've got a couple of dates that we're working towards and we're now in the meat of the training. Um, and Mick's ready, Mick's ready for the level now. I think he's got a number one ranking in the WBO and, and I said after his last performance, if a world title fight gets presented, he's ready for it now. So it's literally now just keep doing what we're doing in the gym, keep chipping away at the improvements that he's been making because Mick's made of the right stuff. His mental attitude to this sport is perfectly suited and he's an absolute joy to work with as well. So um, I'm excited and I'm excited for this year. Um, Mick, Mick's good enough and popular enough to be one of the front runners to get a good a golden opportunity. So hopefully MTK and top rank can deliver and uh, we can get well, my, my third Irish world champion. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I'm not sure if you saw an interview with Harlem that he did with Harlem Eubank did with Coogan a couple of days ago where he was asked a question about Conor Ben and he said, I would love to have that fight. I would love to take that Conor Ben fight. Is that a fight that's on the radar for you? I know different weight classes, but potentially do you see Harlem moving up in the near future? No, it's not on my radar because no one's proposed it, but obviously Harlem has got his own desires and ambitions as well as a young man. But if, if that fight got offered to me, yeah, of course I'd take it. Does that become even bigger because it's a, a Eubank Ben? It'll be, it's a great little story, but you know, Conor Ben's got his own journey to deal with at the moment. And like I said, he's one of Matron's main fighters, and he gets, again, the, the golden opportunities. And so he's got to stay focused on his career. But if, like I said, if, if, if Harlem wanted that fight and it got offered, then yeah, 100% take it. Okay, I know we said 10 minutes. I'm going to make sure it's under 10 minutes. I'm a man of my word, Adam, but I've still got a couple of minutes. So I'm going to drag it a little bit. Um, You've got a picture on your on your T-shirt of one of the great middleweights that's ever been in the sport of boxing. Sally passed away um, last week. Um, what are your early memories of, of Marvin Hagler? Obviously, it was your kind of era. You're a lot older than me. So mm -hmm. what do you remember about Marvin? How great was he? And would you say he was the best or one of the best? My first, my first memory of him is when he beat Alan Minter at Wembley. That was my first memory of him. Um, he, uh, he beat... Uh, Tony Simpson as well, I think back in 83. I think he beat Minter in 80, if I'm right. So my first memories of Marvin Hagler from 1980, and I took up boxing in 81 or 82. And so he, along with the other Fab Three, were everything to me. They were, my, you know, I was, I idolized all four of them. Um, and so, you know, Hagler was, and watching Hagler, and talking to my mates Chris Oko and Gary Logan about Hagler because we all adored him was a big part of my upbringing. Who was the best out of that bunch? Depends, it depends what you mean by best. You know, you, if you look at Roberto Duran as a lightweight, it's hard to put anyone above him. Look at Sugar Ray as a welterweight. You know, you, you can put people in line with them, but I don't know if you can put someone above them. And it's the same with Marvin Hagler. You can't, you can, you can't say that there's a middleweight better than him, but you could probably put great middleweights alongside him. Um, so can't answer that question. I just love them all, all four of them. For someone who's been in the sport most of their life, Adam, is it sad to see when you, we have a, a division full of, I'm not going to talk about any particular division, but when there are divisions full of great fighters and they're just dragging the fights along, 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 until they get older, and they might just end up fighting just the once, but these kings fought themselves each other two or three times and gave us great fights and memories and when they do pass away we remember them in good faith um, yeah the business business models change and you know, when fighters sign exclusive promotional agreements they sign away a certain amount of control because promoters sign with networks and networks don't all invest money in building other people's fighters and so that's probably I'd say, I'd say it's probably that business element that gets in the way of um, certain fights being made but when they do get made you know we, we can be grateful for when they happen we heard some clicks in the background not sure where that came from maybe some birds on top of the ceiling adam but uh yeah we've gone over by 24 seconds so i do apologize in <laughs> advance uh, and look forward to catching up with you in due course That's right. adam booth ifl tv thank you very much